All right, guys, today we're going to be looking at identifying functions from data. Okay, now first we're going to do the very obvious, which is by graphing it. And then I'm going to teach you another way that you can find out what type of functions these are, just by looking at the data and doing a little bit of easier math. Okay, because we don't always want to graph it. So, let's go ahead. The functions that we've done so far this year is we've looked at linear graphs. Right? We did a whole bunch of stuff with linear graphs, straight lines. Then we looked at quadratics, which were the parabola. And then we recently we've done exponential graphs. We haven't spent a lot of time on them, but we have looked at them. We've looked at growth and decay, which would end up giving us an exponential graph. And so we have been introduced to them. Now we've done absolute values, but we're not going to worry about those today. All right. So let's go ahead and look at the data that we have. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plot the data. Okay, so I'm going to take the data from this table right here. I'm going to go to x negative 2. Now, my graph goes by the, the little marks are 1s, and the lines here are 2. So this is negative 2, negative 8. So I'll put one point right there. Then I'll go to negative 1, negative 3. And then I'll go to 0, 2. So 0, 2. And then I'll go to 1, 7, which is right there. And then I'll go to 2. 12. All right, now you can see that these lines, these are in a very nice straight line. Therefore, this data is linear. Okay, so yes, linear. Why I did a cursive L and not cursive other letters, I have absolutely no idea. That's not the point. This is linear. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing for the next, next data, but instead of taking time to put the points, I'm just going to go magically. Poof, there they are. See, I've got each of the five points there. You can do this by yourself. You know how to plot points on a graph. You still got x and y. You can put the points on there. So now look at this data. Now we look at this, and this line looks like it could either be part of a parabola, like this, or it could be exponential. Okay. Now when I look at this, I can tell right off the bat that it's exponential just because I'm used to them. But this kind of gives us the reason why it's going to be so important for us to have another way of doing this. Okay, so this is an exponential. And then the last one right here, let's go ahead and plot that one. Ta-da! There they are. So we got the points down. And now you can tell that this is definitely not linear. It's not exponential because exponential doesn't curve back up, which leaves only one option, that this is quadratic. So you can do graphing, but as we saw in that second one, exponential, that one, eh, debatably from the data, could have looked like a quadratic because we didn't have the other side. So we don't know for sure whether it keeps on going straight or whether it curves back up, which is why I'm going to teach you right now how to use the numbers, the data. What we're going to be looking at is what we call the constant differences or the constant ratios. All right, so let's first look at the linear graph. What we can do as we look at this is we can go from point to point at looking at the y values. Assuming that the x values are the same distance apart. These are all one apart, so it's fine. They can be two apart or four apart, but it's most helpful if they're one apart. But as long as each one is the same distance apart, negative 2 to negative 1, negative 1 to 0, we can do this. We can look at what we call the constant differences and the constant ratios. So first, let's look at each of these. When I go from negative 8 to negative 3, how do I get there? Well, negative 8 to negative 3 means that I have to subtract 5. Now, yes, that's looking this way. Usually, we do final minus initial, right? The change, we've done this before, change equals final minus initial. So when we find the difference, we're actually going to do this one minus that one. So if I go negative 3 minus 8, minus negative 8, sorry, that would be plus a positive, which is 5. Okay, so that's the constant difference because I had to subtract 5 to get there. We look at the next one. We go from negative 3 to 2. So if we go 2 minus negative 3, that same thing as 2 plus 3, which is again 5. Right here, 7 minus 2, which is 5 again. 12 minus 7 is 5 again. So we notice that for a linear graph, the constant difference, or the first const the first difference, is a constant. It's always the same. So 
any time that you see that, it will be a linear graph. All right, let's look at exponential and see what happens there. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, sorry, actually I'm going to do quadratic first, if that's all right with you. So we'll look at quadratic, we'll look at the difference, so we'll go negative 7 minus negative 3, so plus, which means minus 4, because to get from 3 to negative 7, I'm going to minus 4. Then we'll go negative 9 minus negative 7. Negative 9 minus negative 7 would be negative 2. Negative 9 to negative 9 is 0. And then negative 7 minus negative 9 add would be positive 2. And you'll notice here that these aren't the same. So it's definitely not linear. Because if the first difference is constant, then it's linear. But what we can do is we can actually go a step further. So we're going to, now going to take these numbers. We're going to find the constant difference. This was the first difference. Now we're going to look at the second difference. All right. Now if we look at the second difference, we notice that negative 2 minus negative 4 is positive 2. 0 minus negative 2 is positive 2. And 2 minus 0, again, is positive 2. And you'll see that a constant second difference results in a quadratic. Okay, So we've got the linear, which is a constant. Constant is not spelled with st. So constant first difference. Then we've got the quadratic, which was a constant second difference and now we'll look at exponential all right so let's go ahead we'll go 4 minus 8 which is negative 4 2 minus 4 which is negative 2 1 minus 2 which is negative 1 0.5 minus 1 which is negative 0.5 let's go ahead we'll look at the second difference negative 2 minus negative 4 so negative 2 minus Negative 4, that's add a positive, so that's 2. Negative 1 minus negative 2, that's 1. Negative 1 minus negative 0.5 is, so plus plus, that would be negative 1 half, okay? Um, which isn't really, oh sorry, it should be, um, that's, that's wrong, so it should be negative 0.5 minus a negative 1. So plus plus, which gives us a positive 0.5. So we notice that the second differences are not constant either. So, okay, we say, well, let's try the third differences. But I think you can see that there's a difference of 1 here and a difference of 1 half there. So the, the differences are not going to be constant. So we've got to look at something different. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we're going to look at constant differences. Okay, so first and second differences. First differences for linear, second differences for quadratic. And we were also going to look at constant, or, uh, constant ratios. And so that's what we're going to look at next. So we're going to look at the ratios. Now ratio, when we look at ratio, we're not going to be looking at adding and subtracting. We're going to be looking at uh, multiplying and dividing. So what we're going to do, instead of doing 4 minus 8, we're going to do 4 divided by 8. So if we do 4 divided by 8, we get 1 half, which means that 8 times 1 half is 4. Now if we get do 2 divided by 4, that is also 1 half. So 4 times 1 half gives us 2. 1 divided by 2 is also 1 half. And so again, we see that each time the ratio is the same because I'm multiplying or dividing by the same number each time. I'm multiplying by 1 half or dividing by 2. And so recognizing that, that's what we call a constant ratio. And an exponential function will always have a constant ratio. So that's kind of your introduction. I know that was a little bit more than five minutes, but it was less than 10. So here's your introduction. Go on and flip to the next video, and we'll do a couple more examples just to make sure that everything's okay. All right?